inside because they lead in the team competition, have the top three individuals after yesterday's day one of gymnastics. The center stage belongs to the women today, and important it is in terms of Olympic history and some mighty big names in this sport. The women that uh, have gone uh, through the years known by their first names, the Olgas and the Nadias and uh, the Mary Lou's. Uh, they'll go through their prescribed four event uh, compulsories today, and we pretty much have headlined those who you should watch for and that we will be talking a lot about. It's like going to the theater. You open up your program. They're the ones in the bold print. They have the nice big pictures and the long biographies, Silovaj and Dobre for Romania, Shushanova for the USSR, and the U.S. is number one. That would be Phoebe Mills, the national champion, and we'll be talking a lot about them. But how about some long shots? You know, we really didn't know much about Mary Lou or Nadia or Olga before they hit the stardom. Here's one uh, thought. How about the USSR's Natalia Lashenova? She's just 15 years old, 4 feet 8 inches, 80 pounds. But don't be fooled by her size. She's incredibly powerful, and she has that quality that attracts audiences and judges. She's charismatic. And for the USA, we have a Mary Lou type. Her name is Brandy Johnson from uh, just outside Orlando, Florida. She's under five feet, under 100 pounds. She's got a brother that's 6'2 and 220, a football player in high school back there in Florida. Named after the popular song of the 70s, she can uh, really air it out. She's got tremendous strength. She'll be tough on the floor and the vault. If Brandy Johnson can score a 9-8 in the compulsory vault in this session today, they go last the U.S., she has a chance for a medal. So maybe we'll see them. Natalia or Brandy could be the name of 1988, right? Okay, Dick. The and we welcome you to Gymnastics Hall for the women's compulsory round. Let's start with three basic facts. One, the Soviet Union, since they first entered Olympic competition in 1952, their women have never, never lost the team competition when they've competed. Of course, they weren't there in 84. The U.S., until 84, had won only one women's gymnastic medal. That was way back in the 40s of bronze, until 84, when they collected eight. Three, Mary Lou Retton joined the list of Cinderella's. This sport really has created Cinderella's names that we'll remember forever. And she joins us for the competition, and we welcome you. Thank you, Dick. Now, I know you have two favorites that are really long shots in this competition, the Soviet Union's Natalia Lashenovit and our own USA's Brandy Johnson's. And I totally agree with you, but this compulsory competition is going to be the most important for them. They must establish themselves here and make their presence known for them to have any type of chance in the optional rounds. Yeah, they're going against the stars, and they're only 15 and relative unknowns. Now, let's talk about the compulsories. I did a little research, and I happen to know that you weren't exactly in love with this compulsory round. Dick, to be totally honest, I hated compulsories, and they were the most difficult for me. So once I got past the, the compulsory rounds in 84, I was fine. That was necessary, though, for you to really flirt with that goal, the all-around goal. Oh, absolutely. It was the most important competition for me, as it is for a lot of gymnasts here in this competition. Well, Bart Conner won a couple of goals, the team competition as well as on the parallel bars and uh, I think we were both stunned by what happened yesterday you talk about the judges and they have the sharp pencils when they start in the morning boy they're really tough and then as the day goes along they get a lot freer with the scores and the night session was unbelievable and it really isn't necessarily fair and I think if we draw a comparison with the US men's team the US men's team got a horrible draw in the first round I think because of that they tightened up and they weren't able to relax and they had problems in contrast the US women got the best draw they could possibly get there the last session of the day and I think because of that they know that if the scores escalate like they did in the men's competition they can relax all they have to do is hit the routines to have a good competition all right four events we're going to see the East Germans and Bulgarians in this first session East Germany finished third in the world in 1987 Bulgaria five give us uh, one face to watch closely one of my favorites is Dörte Tumler and she's from East Germany and she was the uneven bar world champion in 87 and she was the top non so or non Romanian to place in the all around in those competitions Competitions. And so she'll be one of the favorites, and she'll have to lead the East German team's effort here. And here is the five-foot teamler, only 88 pounds. Outside of Romania and the Soviet Union, she was number one at the 87 Worlds in the all-around. This is the first time we've seen this compulsory exercise, and the mound is a pike open, and she does that beautifully. This is the first rotation of four. The East Germans on the floor. She really has a very elegant style of dance. Her presentation is terrific. Only 16 with that uh, Marlena Dietrich look, that short hair. Here's the second important tumbling run. Front step out, handspring dive roll. Beautiful. 
There are really three critical tumbling runs. The judges are looking for height, good clean form in the air on the three tumbling runs. And of course, this is a tricky move right here. Back walk over to a full split and a full turn. is terrific. Here's the last run. A very nice layout step out. She floated out of the sky. Great job. And a very attractive 16-year-old from East Germany, Dörte Teamler. And there are her scores in solidarity. Dropped the low and the high. Averaged the middle four a 9-9 as she is the sixth and final competitor in this rotation for East Germany. Mary Lou? Your impressions of that floor exercise? I was very impressed with her. She, for as little as she is and as young as she is, she can really dance very well. She was uh, fifth in the floor exercise in the World Championships in Rotterdam. 9-9 for Teamler. Now let's go to the Bulgarians. They were fifth in the world in 1987 as a team. And their cleanup hitter is Dudieva. She's on the high bar. Or on even bars. The critical moves are right here, this giant up and a straddle back to a handstand on the low bar. She hit all the positions just right. The exercise actually is a little choppy. I think she could be smoother, but she sure is hitting all the positions. And a beautiful layout flyaway dismount. Stoyanova, Stoyanova, who uh, preceded her and another top Bulgarian gymnast, scored only a 9.475. That may have hurt the performance of Dudieva, and she gets a 9.75. So after the first rotation, the Bulgarians fall behind quickly. The East Germans, who had a very solid round, the East Germans on the floor, lowest score, 9.55. They come out, they drop the low score, 49. And uh, Bulgaria almost a full point behind after one rotation. And Japan had a horrible first rotation on the vault. 